Hey Scrappers, Moose here. So, this is going to be the Moose Scrapper Show Episode 3. Uh, I've got a lot of information here. I've got um, some information on how I've changed to um, try and make more money and adapt to the times with as, as far as ink and toner goes. Um, I've got some information on my new favorite way to depopulate circuit boards. And I've got a few other things, you know, some fan mail. Um, and make sure you, you, at the end of the video, you check out... Uh, a video that one of my subscribers and a friend of mine in Boston, Joe, sent me. Um, it's a great video. You're going to love it. It's really short, uh, and it's right at the end of this. So make sure you watch it all the way to the end. And again, thanks for watching. See you at the end. Hey, Scrappers. Moose here. Um, so this section of the, the show, I'm going to be showing you. Um, it's a method for depopulating circuit boards. I like it, this one. Um, it's a method that's been... Suggested that I try by many different people and I've tried it out. It works pretty well. I've got um, my own little adaptation to the, the system here. Uh, basically what you're going to be using is an impact hammer with a chisel bit on it. Um, I made sure to sharpen that bit quite a bit uh, so that it just cuts through easier. I have a little pancake air compressor that struggles to get to 60 psi so um, <clears throat> it still works though so this I'll show you my setup over here all right so what I've done is I've taken a cardboard box um, and a couple of pieces of wood and tacked it down to the table um, so that you know the board isn't moving around all over the place that slows things up um, and what you can do is once you're done you know the, the, the box will, pieces are going to fly. I mean, these little things are going to start flying all over the place. The box is going to stop them from, stop you from losing all the pieces. Um, and once you're done, you can just pull up these boards or unscrew them and just use, you know, the, the corner of the box here to just pour out the, the pieces into, you know, a container for sorting. Now, I, I've had a lot of different viewers suggest trying different methods of sorting uh, from using different vacuum bag systems to all kinds of things. I haven't really been able to figure out a way to get that to actually work um, effectively. Uh, so for right now, uh, what I mostly do is uh, just use the, um, um, the air hammer to pretty much cherry pick things that I want off of it. So like with this one, um, there, there were a few places where there's like gold plated pins, uh, so I'll, this will, it'll knock them off really quick. Uh, then IC chips, smaller things I have not had very good luck with, especially like monolithic ceramic capacitors, because the hammer is just going to shatter them into a million pieces, and you know, good luck sorting them out after that. Alright, so I'm going to get my air compressor back on. Take a few minutes to get back up to uh, around 60 psi. All right, so I'm up to 50 psi right now, um, and I'm just going to show you how this works. Hopefully, you can uh, see this pretty well. But I mean, you just, you know, you make sure that the board is pushed up against the wood here, so it doesn't fly all over the place. Um, one thing I wanted to 
to make sure I pointed out was that um, you know sometimes you have these like long sets of pins that are real pain in the uh, the butt to get off. They come off fairly easy with the, the air hammer. You can see that up here in the corner. Ah, see how quick and easy that was. Now you can just pull all those gold plated pins out. You don't have to worry about solder on anything. But these little things are um, the IC sockets, sometimes they have gold plating in them. As you can see, it works a lot better when the um, air pressure is up to par. But again, I've got just that little itty bitty pancake air compressor that's just not holding up the, the pressure. Alright, so I know a lot of you guys have been wanting me to uh, finish up that series on processing IC chips. Um, so this I thought was a pretty important step in the process of you know showing you how to um, how to collect these things because I can't stress enough, um, and it, it's something that no matter how many times I say it, I feel most people don't really hear it or don't want to hear it. Um, but it takes a lot of material to make. An amount, any reasonable amount of gold. Um, and yes, so for all those people out there, I know I'm going to get tons of comments um, from people saying, you know, well, you should remove the ICs because you can resell them. Some of them are worth money. Yeah, that's true. Um, however, these boards were going in a dumpster. So yeah, you can complain all you want that, you know, I'm you know, wasting something valuable, but I'm still taking it out of a landfill and going to be processing it for something that still has value. So complain all you want, you know, I'm doing something with it. Um, I don't have the, the knowledge or expertise to actually go through each and every one. Um, and, you know, in a box there's gonna be a thousand of them to remove every single one individually, research, test. That would take a lot of time. So, so I think that about covers it. Um, I've got, uh, my friend from Boston, Joe, is going to be coming up hopefully the end of May um, to help me with um, incinerating some ICs. So I can show you that step in the process. 
Um, there, there's not going to be you know one video that has all of it in there because it'd be like a two hour video and no one wants to sit down for two hours and watch just that. Um, so keep that in mind. And while you're here, I might as well show you. Let's see, I'm done for today. Today I just stuck it down with you know, little brad nails. So, couldn't find any screws. Everything is right there in the corner of the box. So it's right there, it's easy to pour out, or you can spread it out and sort through it by hand now. Pull out all the ICs, pull out good bearing pins, pull out any you know, sort it however you like. Alright, so that's it. Um, yeah. That's how I'm... That's, that, that's my new favorite way of depopulating boards right now. This method will work for flat packs. It'll work for, I mean, pretty much anything. I mean, the key is making sure that your air compressor can keep up with the, uh, the airflow demand. Uh, these little pancake ones don't really work that well. Um, if you've got a, like a larger 40 gallon or 20 gallon even, that would work a lot better. Um, I think there's anything I forgot. So it is spring now. Temperatures are warming up. I'm able to get back in the garage. Um, um, I've been getting a lot of questions, you know, wh where have you been? Where are your videos? Um, kind of running out, out of ideas, but um, I did visit my friend Joe yesterday in Boston. So I do have a, a few other things that are interesting. Um, like this fire panel, uh, or fire pump panel system. So I've got that to take apart. And, you know, I've got some boxes of some random stuff here. Um, more stuff down there that I picked up yesterday. But again, and I'm going to save this a lot from here on out so get used to it. Um, selling on eBay, that's where the money is. Um, so a lot of times you're going to see me commenting more about selling than scrapping. Uh, it's just, you know, the natural evolution of things. Um, that's not to say that, you know, if you have something that's junk uh, or something that's not working, not sellable, by all means, scrap it. It makes something off of it. Uh, but scrap is going to be the lowest value for it. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, stick them down there in the comment section. I will try and get to them as, as best as I can. Um, been quite busy. Um, so I haven't been just... You know, sitting on my couch watching TV all the time. Of course, it would be fun, I guess. Uh, but, um, so that's it. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Alrighty, folks. So, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about ink and toner uh, cartridges. Uh, I know I have a few videos out on these on how to, you know, recover, you know, tiny bits of gold from them. Um, and I also had one video that I, that I want to make a correction on, or a change actually. Uh, I had mentioned that um, a lot of these toner and ink cartridges can be resold for money. Uh, and the, the places that I had mentioned in these videos, I think at least a couple of years ago, um, were one, like bringing them to Staples, which I don't think Staples offers that program anymore. Uh, they don't give you like, it used to be like a $2 store credit. Um, for every, for anything that you brought in, uh, regardless of what it was. Um, and then for a brief period of time, I was using the eCycle group. Um, they're a website where they give you a shipping label. You just pack up all of your ink and toner. They have price lists of what they pay for, you know, each thing on their website. Um, you send it off to them and then they set up an account with you and as soon as your account hits $25 once a month they'll send you a check. Um, I'm no longer using them 
particularly for, for a few reasons. One, I don't like to, to talk badly about other people, um, but the last three shipments that I've sent them, it's taken well over 30 days for them to process, which is, I mean, really, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, their prices, for some reason now, are so extremely low. Um, it's just not worth it. I mean, granted, they still pay for the shipping, um, but, you know, I had a box that was, I mean, it was a massive box. I mean, like maybe this big, just as tall. Um, I know you can't see me on the viewfinder there, but anyway. So it was a huge box full of toner cartridges, um, which tend to get more than the inkjet cartridges. And it was like less than 20 bucks. Um, and it took them forever. I had to keep following up with them. You know, I kept checking my account and nothing was posting to it. Um, so it took a while for them to you know, respond and then say, oh yeah, well here it is. Of course there was not a lot of great detail in it, so I don't know if everything that was in the box was posted. But anyway, um, what I have found, and um, I think that you know, it's another one of those things where, again, I push eBay. Uh, you got to love eBay. I mean, eBay is a, is a great source of income. Um, those empty toner cartridges and ink cartridges, um, particularly what they call virgin, the ones that have not been uh, refilled yet, you can get, I mean, 10 times more money than you would on most of these other uh, buying sites. Um, they tend to go better if you have lots of them, like a lot of 10 uh, or 5 or whatever. Um, and even though most of these buying sites won't touch anything that's already been refilled, but on eBay, people will still buy them. So you're not stuck with anything. So if you have like a, a connection with, with an office like I do um, that uses a lot of ink and toner, sometimes they buy aftermarket ones because they're cheaper, um, you can still make a few bucks off of them. So I would definitely recommend, um, again, I hate doing this, but I, I personally, I would say avoid the e-cycle group um, and go with eBay when it comes to selling your ink and toner. Now, you can still, I mean, some of them, even on eBay, they're not going to go for much. Not everything is going to have you know, a great resale value, um, but you can still, still pull the little gold chunks off. I mean, it's it's really not much. I, I can't stress that enough. With with gold recovery from electronics, you're not going to really find any one thing that has a lot of gold on it. Um, at least not very common. I mean, a ceramic CPU might have a decent amount, but still not as much as what people who aren't in recovery and refining would expect. Um, so, lost my train of thought there. So, yeah, I mean... If you have, you know, like a big box of ink and toner that you want to get rid of, if it's all mixed or something, you know, go ahead, pull the little gold bearing pieces off and, you know, recover it or, or do whatever, um, or make more money selling on eBay. That's, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention about that. So, thanks for watching. Alright, so this is what I call Scrapper's Christmas. Um... You probably can't see it very well, but that shelf up there is filled with all kinds of boxes of electronics and just, I mean, emergency lights, all kinds of things, brand new, still in the box. Then, down there, I've got two huge boxes full of circuit boards. A big box, actually, there's a box and a tote of security cameras and other security software. Um really expensive marble tile. There's an expensive um, uh, espresso machine. That's the back side of it. A little mini fridge. There we go. One of those high-end machines. And some other stuff. All this crap over here. It's big spools of wire. More circuit boards. Boxes of circuit boards. More circuit boards. More circuit boards from like elevators and telecom and all that stuff. That whole box is full of hard drives. There's more stuff to scrap. And another two spools of wire there. And there's some boxes over there with, with more stuff in it. Walk around here. Oh, we got some those um, over the wall conduit covers, wire conduits. Got a huge unopened box of ceiling tiles. 
two of these um, well, things that look like that. It's a semicircle uh, wall mounted trash can. It's like industrial or commercial. Uh, another box of unopened box of ceiling tiles. Uh, there's a, a drop down heater, a glass cutter for picture frames, a bunch of you know, emergency light lead acid batteries, a little light there. All kinds of stuff in this garage. And you want to know why I call it Scrapper's Christmas? Because most of it's not getting scrapped. But what happened was, I just disappeared. What happened was, um, someone who watches my channel, Joe, um, this guy in Boston, he. All right, technical difficulties. There, stay. Okay. So this guy Joe, he had all kinds of stuff <clears throat> from some buildings that he works at that they were just going to chuck out. All right. And he approached me. He said, "Hey, do you want to, you know, go halves in this stuff? You, know, you do the work to sell it and ship it and all that stuff, and you'll keep providing it. So why not? I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff here. And the nice thing is, it, it's a very clear example of how much stuff out there just gets thrown out." And how important it is to make connections like this. I mean, you find yourself some people who do like property management or something like that. You'd be amazed at how much waste there is that you could really make some money off of. And some people just, they, either they don't have the time or um, they just, some people are, are not comfortable with eBay or Craigslist. You know, so much money to be made in all this. So this is why I call it Scrapper's Christmas because he came up last fall, dropped off a load of stuff. Um, including, I forgot to show, that smart board over there. <laughs> There's stuff, I mean, it's some projector screens. This is all stuff that I haven't moved yet from last fall. But this last weekend, um, I went down to Boston with my brother to pick up some of this stuff. And, man, I mean, there's huge boxes of, unopened boxes of fluorescent bulbs that we're just going to get chucked because they updated the lighting or something. All right now, each one of these boxes I can get a hundred bucks each. All right, so keep your options open. Don't limit yourself to just scrapping. You know, there's tons of money to be made out there. You know, by reselling, and it's really not that difficult. You just need a little bit of space, which you know, for for some people is a problem. I get it, but I mean, if if you get yourself a source of you know resale stuff like this fairly regularly all it takes is a profit of a hundred dollars a month to pay for a storage unit and then you can store tons of stuff and sell it that's if you don't have the space i mean i've got a garage a huge garage eh, okay you gonna throw up awesome um that you know eventually this summer i just built those shelves today uh but this summer i'm gonna be building a shelf that starts off with that top one and goes all the way across the garage and then all the way across there. I'll need a step ladder to get to it, but I mean, that's this is what, at least 11 foot ceilings, 12 foot ceilings in here. That's a lot of wasted space that I could use to, you know, store more stuff to sell on eBay, which is great. Oh, and that ginormous ladder came from Boston, too. <laughs> all right. So that's my two cents on that. Um, so definitely, remember, keep your options open. Don't be afraid to try and sell something. You know, of course, make sure it works first. This is a, a bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, but that's it. Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to share with you really quick. Um, <clears throat> I'm about to uh, ship the largest package I've ever shipped. Uh, something that you know, I'm just trying to push the, the envelope a little bit with stuff that I'm selling on eBay. Um, this last couple months has been crazy with eBay busy, um, just selling all kinds of stuff for other people, getting a commission off it, um, a lot easier than scrapping, a lot more money. Um, so this, I'm going to show you, it's kind of hard to tell, but inside that box is an outboard motor. <laughs> um, you better view of it that way, it's taller than my stove. Um, it's not very heavy, but it's just you know a big motor with a stand. Um, so I gotta 
had to put three boxes together and I'm going to have to tape the hell out of them and make sure they stick and then um, get the dolly and try and load it into the truck and bring it to the FedEx store tomorrow. So <laughs> that's what I've been up to. Just thought I'd share that with you. Um, so you know, I, I know I've mentioned many times before about selling on eBay and you know how that should be a part of every scrapper's um, income. Um, you, you can't be afraid to take some risks. <laughs> it's 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 amazing some of the stuff that we'll sell on eBay. I mean, this motor, um, my old landlord and friend of mine, Mark, he um, he bought this from you know someone who had like an estate sale or something, and um, uh, he bought it for hardly anything, and it was with a bunch of other stuff. And I just sold this on eBay for 400 bucks, so that, that's pretty decent. Um, and it's a small motor too. It's only like a 2.7 horse, uh, but you know, it's long and it's got the stand. So. So that's it. All right, so I got a question from um, uh, one of my viewers, uh, also a guy who's on the um, um, Eagles Refining um, group on Facebook, Ken Nance. Uh, he asked me, I hope I said the last name <laughs> right, by the way. Um, so he asked me a question about laptops. He, he just got a bunch of laptops, um, and he was you know, wondering how to make the most money off of them. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, just scrap it, it's a laptop, you know. But in all honesty, even if you get a really rare old laptop that has like, um, you know, a ceramic CPU in it or, or something, <clears throat> the amount of gold and precious metals and other scrap that you're going to pull out of it is going to be less than if you were to try and sell it on eBay just for parts, right? Remove the hard drive so you don't have to worry about you know, your, your suppliers of e-waste getting upset with you. Um, and if you sell them on eBay, I have not sold one laptop for less than $20. And that's way more than what you're going to pull out um, in precious metal value and other metals. And plus, it's, it's a lot faster. I mean, taking one apart takes time. Um, but there are people out there who buy these just to take apart and to sell the parts. Uh, it's a huge market. You can take one apart and say there's 50 pieces, and you, you make three or four dollars off each piece. You're making a ton of money off of it, um, as opposed to just you know, scrapping it. So he asked my opinion. That was it. Uh, if you get laptops, laptops are one of the things that that I would say. You know, definitely sell it first. Uh, even cell phones, if you can, you know, wipe them, uh, remove the SIM cards and stuff. Uh, it's definitely worth it to look on eBay to see how much something has sold for recently. And if it's more than, you know, 10 bucks, it's worth it to sell on eBay versus trying to recover the precious metals. And don't get me wrong, if you do that as a hobby, like I do, that, that's fine, that's great. I mean, keep doing I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you that there is a, a way to make more money off of it. So that's it. She said yes. Congratulations. All right. So if you watched this all the way to the end and you just saw that last video clip, that was my friend Joe proposing to his uh, longtime girlfriend. She said yes. Um, as always, I'm glad to be able to be a part of, of things. Um, he's the guy who's been um, uh, providing me with all that stuff that I showed in the Scrapper's Christmas part. Um, and his half of the proceeds are going to go pay for that wedding. So hopefully we can raise enough money so you can have a great one and a good honeymoon. So thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, keep at it. There, there's money to be made out there. You can do it. So have a good one.